and away we go. Nice, we're back. This is kind of like um, this is just so much fun with Joe the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I bring fun to the party. Yeah. It is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. How many lawyers can say that? Yeah. None. Not too many. None. <laughs> no. it depends on the party. Yeah. There you go. No doubt. No doubt. Well, you know, we're sitting here and. Like I said, we always say we're always looking at the internet for interesting things to talk about, and sometimes we find some good ones. Sometimes we find some that you just want to face palm yourself yeah. and go hookers for Notre Dame. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that can go down the wrong road. <laughs> but there's there's a there's a incident going on on a border um, in New Mexico, and it's a group of guys that have been actually patrolling the border for a while. They're armed citizens. Yep. And uh, it's the AC, ACU? It's something like it's, yeah. It started from the Minuteman. It's, yeah, it's, it's like an a consti- offshoot of the Minuteman. Yeah, it's like a constitutional kind it's, of group of guys. Right. That go down there. It's not Oath Keepers, though, right? No, it's not. It's not. And so um, they've been down there, um, and what they've been doing was basically detaining people crossing the border illegally until the Border Patrol gets there. They've actually been cited as being helpful. Right. But what happened was the ACLU gets involved, mm-hmm. and the ACLU spins up the FBI. And the FBI starts looking into the background. background. Well, they do surveillance, and they start going, oh, who, this guy is yeah. this guy. And um, I, I found it funny that he called himself Johnny Horton. <laughs> His AKA <laughs> was Johnny Horton. Because, you know, Johnny Horton sang all those That's great That's what songs. I was about to say. Yeah. Is the dude from the song? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's the guy's name again? Larry Hopkins? Larry, Larry Mitchell Hopkins. Yeah, Larry Hopkins. What is he, like 70? 69. So he's yeah. 69. So he's just shy of 70. Is this the dude we just queued up as yeah. Fat Elvis? Yeah, yeah that's Fat the guy. Yeah, that's the guy. That looks like Fat Elvis. Fat yeah. Elvis. The mugshot is phenomenal. Elvis didn't really die. Is, yeah. He just went to the border. <laughs> and by the way, it's the United <laughs> Constitutional Patriots. That's it. UCP. There yeah, UCP. The United Constitutional Patriots. So the ACLU spins up the FBI and they look into this guy and they find that he had a felony arrest in Oregon. Is a firearms related yeah. arrest, right? Or do we know what that arrest was over? More than likely, probably machine guns or sawed off, uh, sawed off weapon, SBR, yeah. SBS, yeah. something like that. So, so he's in violation of a, of a federal law, and so he was arrested. Popped and, him. Yeah, popped him, put him away. And, you know, it's it's funny because, so that border's a real volatile um, situation right now because there's there's all kinds of stories flying about armed militants bringing over people into right. the United States. And they've actually had videos of uh, surveillance videos of, of multiple armed men on one side of the border bringing three and four people to the border and assisting their crossing and then going back off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take this cartels, whatever yeah, you want to, whatever it is. I mean, and it's funny because um, we're seeing an, uh, an immigration crisis in mass coming across border checkpoints. Right. But what they're not talking about is the armed incursions that happen along the border. Very dangerous. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to own property anywhere down there. And the property owners are all up in arms about it because yeah. you have the you have the um, the people like Pelosi saying, "Well, there's nothing to see here. That's not a problem." Yeah. yeah. And it, even when she goes down to the border, she won't go see the real problems. Right. Then you get. President. She goes to like Lock and Terra or something like yeah. that. You know, some resort. Yeah, some resort place. Yeah. <laughs> and then then you have the gut. You have uh, Ted Cruz goes down there. The governor goes down there. The president goes down there. Yeah. And they're actually interacting with Border Patrol agents and, and ICE agents. And they're actually telling you, hey, look, we're now concerned because we're seeing armed intervention on the other side of the border. And we're also seeing diseases coming in. Right. From the, a lot of these people. Measles is now having an uptick. Yep. Small polio. Pox, polio. polio, the yeah. first time in what, 65 years? Something, yep. 70, 70, 80 years. So, yeah, yeah, 80 years. We eradicated States. that like 80 yeah. years ago. And they're getting. Just re, you're just basically revamping your, your eradication program it, yeah. all over again. All over again. So, you know, there's there's a lot of really, there's crisis issues there. But, you know, coming back to these guys, um, <laughs> it's funny because um, there was a comment made that. Well, it would have turned in, if they didn't do anything different, it would have turned into a Bundy situation. Right. Which is not true. Right. Because when you talk to the spokesman of the group, he would have said, no, look, we peacefully, we detain people until the Border Patrol gets there. Right. ACLU says that's a problem. It's kidnapping. I believe yeah. they're referring to it as kidnapping. It's kidnapping of a person that is illegally entering the United States of America. Right. And these guys are on private property with permission of the property owners. Right. 
It's not like they're trespassing like the people yeah. they're stopping from coming across the border. Right. So it, it's funny to see the ACLU again get involved in the rights of the illegal aliens sneaking into the country. Seems to be a theme. You know, everybody's oh, wanting to take sides with anybody but an American. It goes back right. to what we were talking about weeks ago when I was saying, you sure. know, politicians are out there for everybody but the American citizen. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that... Um, I'd like to know what uh, the lawyer thinks about this because there's there's a lot here that's. Uh, I think the uh, ACLU is very good at spinning facts. Yeah. I mean that's what lawyers do. Yeah. You go into a court of law, everybody thinks that there's this bright line: what's true and what's not. It's not true. It's there are shades on either side, and you can spin just like in politics. You can spin a narrative one way or another, and the ACLU has done a very good job of coming down and focusing on the bad facts that this guy's a felon that he had a, a a gun he was arrested well they don't tell you all that the headline is ucp commander arrested right and people immediately think that he was arrested because he was trying to detain these illegal immigrants that were coming across and that's not the case he was arrested because he was a felon in possession of a gun right right he's not the best spokesperson to be out there but I agree with you, Ken. I mean, I think um, from a legal standpoint, those guys were on private property. Mm -hmm. As long as they were not physically harming mm -hmm. those individuals um, and, and they're waiting for the Border Patrol to get there, it's just like a citizen's arrest. I mean, you, you, yeah. if you see somebody breaking a law, there are certain occasions where you can make what's called a citizen's arrest. And so with the ACLU, basically, with how they run a story with their story be considered the squeaky wheel and somebody's just uh, addressing the squeaky yeah. wheel. Well, and they, I, they call them a fascist militia is basically what they're doing. They're using the whole, yeah. they're using the terminology that anybody doesn't agree with what their agenda is, you're a fascist. Racist, mm -hmm. fascist. So how they described them, this is interesting, they said dressed in camouflage and carrying weapons. Right. Okay. But the part that the Border Patrol made sure was put in there was they, they detained over 5,600 um, illegal immigrants until they got there to pick them up. And they even have video of how they just basically said, stop, sit, and wait here. Yeah. You got to remember, a lot of these immigrants coming across the border are placed to go across the border. Typically non-combative. They're thinking they're going to cross this border and they're going to get food and welfare and all this other stuff. Sometimes they're strategically placed just to keep somebody occupied. Sure. It's a diversion for sure. So that's going to be the passive crowd. And these guys basically did not have any armed encounters with anybody. Pardon so me, the sad was, part is you've got this organization like the UCP that's close to doing mm -hmm. it right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, what they're doing in theory yeah. is a good thing, I think. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think we should be able to, like Joe was talking about, I mean, we do need to be able to make citizen arrest when it's necessary. Right. Um, but you The gotta, bad part is is they're not doing the background on the people that they're putting in place. Yeah. They're doing smart things like videoing themselves and making yeah. sure that... that Things are their operational standards are right, but their background and the people that they're putting in place are it's so terrible. The funny thing about the American mindset is there's a lot of people that will applaud you, they will send money to your GoFund campaign, yeah, but they won't stand next to you, okay, right? Because they're afraid that if it if, while they're cheering and it goes bad, none of that's going to fall on them, right? Okay, so what ends up happening. Is you ever been on the side of the road and your car broke down and some good old boy pulls up in a beater truck mm -hmm. and he jumps out of that truck and it, it's full of tools and shit all <laughs> over the place and he happens to have that one tool yeah. that helps you get your car started, okay? May not be a dude you're going to go hang out and have lunch with. You may pay him 20 bucks and he goes on, but that's kind of what happens with these groups. Yeah. You got to remember, these are sparsely populated areas, Okay. These are people that are living on fixed income or retirement or very low income, okay? And they're out there, and they're getting sick and tired of all these people trampling through their land, stealing their water, stealing their food, killing an animal or two or whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. And so they grab arms, and they go take care of it. Right. Now, to kind of have some organization to it, they name it a group. Yeah. Okay? Unfortunately, not all those groups. It's like it's like getting a dark group together sometimes. Yeah. You know, you're not going to vet everybody that's in the dark group until you find well, out. Well, it's yeah. a guy. I know a guy that knows this guy. He's, ready, he's willing to come on. You there know, you I mean, go. how many times have we been to yeah. a shooting range where we had a, oh, yeah. a third person that we pick the, up and it's like, who yeah. invited this jack? I would be real careful about what I name my group. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Hey, do I want to be like the the 
the crazed banshee people. You know, no, I don't yeah. want to have a name that's even yeah. remotely. Well, you close need to, to that match name. the acronym with like ACLU. You just need to. Yeah. Now, you make it the ACLU. That, just now, that would a, be funny if you came <laughs> up with your the ACLU stopped somebody at the border today. How Ameri- great would that Americans be? can live unencumbered. There you go. <laughs> yeah, hey, you can do it. Yeah, but you know it, what's funny is that um, there are many good organizations that are very well organized. That's true that um, are nationally recognized by local law enforcement and other groups, especially here in the state of Texas. There's several. Well, that... I mean, obviously, Border Patrol was working with these oh, yeah. guys. They had contact to yep. them, and as, as they stated, they picked up 5,600 people with these yeah. folks. And, so, and I mean, they're doing a service. I mean, they are. You know, as bad as, as, yeah. bad as this turned out, those folks are down there doing a, providing a service that the Border Patrol obviously appreciates. So, so my question here is, so the ACLU digs into these people and they start looking at their backgrounds and they find something they can get somebody on. It's just Yeah, just hooks. I'm willing to bet if we sat there and started looking at people inside the ACLU, yeah, how many of them would we catch and how many of them can we get out of that position by just taking the same tactics they do? Well, it, oh, absolutely. Now, with the ACLU, you've got also assisting agencies. Sure. With, with them, like... Uh, I'm, I'm this one well, guy. Their own legal counsel to fight. Well, it. there's there's one of the assisting agencies is actually associated with Clinton mm-hmm. um, because one of the one of the douchebags I follow on Twitter and I I tell you what I I I read some of the craziest policies that they try to <laughs> to push forward. But the thing that I kind of admire about these groups is if you deep dive every single agency that is within the government. If you juxtapose the, what you've learned about the agencies within the government, there is a counter agency that exists with these groups that do nothing but investigate the, or, or learn about the policies yeah. of all these other groups. So they learn the ins and outs. So they're not dumb. Yeah. No, no. Not by any stretch. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm just kind of looking up some of their affiliates while we're sitting here. What, what I think is interesting about them is they basically say that power is with the people that's what they basically say yeah and they they're they're supposedly there when your civil liberties have been violated by an organization or an entity of some kind it almost sounds sort of socialist when you <laughs> say it like that it me. is and it pretty much is i look at unions as a socialist movement anyway oh, yeah, yeah i think unions basically i'm paying you to collectively bargain on my behalf yeah, I mean that doesn't get and, any real more and socialist a, if you think about the philosophy. Wouldn't you agree, Joe? I mean, we're basically yeah, we're basically conceding, we're conceding a proxy vote. Right. We're conceding a proxy to a private entity that you're hoping is connected enough to sway things for the good of the common good. Right. Well, but, just just look at also Biden just announced, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So apparently, his first public appearance is going to be at a public union. Yes. Yeah, unions yeah. are huge. Yeah, huge. Gave him huge money. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you gotta you gotta make a distinction though. Is is his money is coming from the union, not right. the union not, workers, right. right? And those union workers showed up for Trump last election. Yeah. So the question is going to be: Can right. Biden convince the Good unions point. to pressure enough? To, to implement Biden's socialism, Cause, right? Because Biden's a socialist. So no even the politics, even yeah. the politics, a groping of, socialist of, of yes. union members are different than the union leadership. Always, yeah, always has. And it's funny because everybody associates them with a bunch of bent nosed Italians. Yeah, and my my father yeah. was was part of the postal union. Yeah. We all know people who are, that are yeah. part of unions. Sure. sure. So we're not okay. You're you're going to have a lot of people that are are for unions only because you they benefit in some way. Well, they retire but, differently than the average oh, guy yes. on, on a four hundred one k. Their retirement's completely different. They're basically um, or social security. For yeah, that yeah. Everything is completely different for them under the yes, under the union. Yes. So a lot of them don't understand what the common worker has to go through. Uh-huh to get health care and retirement because they fall under this government blanket. Well, we all of fight benefits. for we all fight for what we want from our employer. Right. Whereas they have a proxy, somebody who goes to the to the to the negotiating table right. and says, "Hey, I want this for all the people." And that's not a knock on the people that we just all decided to to walk a different path. Oh, for sure. And I think that what's really sad in this case is that they've decided to basically go in there and circumvent what I say is constitutional law. Yeah. Because, um, again, we're talking about a group trying to embrace 
a group on the other side of the border. Yeah. Now, now they're basically representing the rights of illegal aliens, non-citizens. In, yeah, non-citizens coming in the United States, and I think that's the footprint they're trying to put in the ground. Now, what I think is interesting is this is one case, but they have all kinds of uh, inquiries in on all these groups that are trying to stop these groups from preventing border crossings. Right, and and it's really sad because. The primary function of the of the president of the United States is to protect the borders and the sovereignty of the United States of America. That's yeah. the number one on the list, right? You know, and when you look at all these, that's been taken from him, though. The, the, well, with the crowd that we have now. I mean, yeah. it's been interesting to watch that Pretty fight much. go down. So at He's some been point, blocked. What's by the courts. He's been blocked. I know. So what what ends up happening at some point in time is you'll have citizens now that will come in conflict with us, right? And uh, it's just a matter of time before they systematically pick their way through the groups and, and start these um, type of inquiries on people. And it's funny because I look at it as, um, as, as the right of the landowner to protect the property right. by any means possible. If the government won't do it by the law, then by God, they should be able to protect it themselves.